This is chapter eight, lifting and moving patients. This is what we need to discuss tonight. Um, obviously, as ENTs, we move patients. We move them from one place to another. Um, obviously, knowing how to do that will um, make it easier. I, when I first became an EMT uh, a couple of days ago, then um, I had a friend, a physical therapist, um, and he would show me a lot of techniques, um, such as body mechanics and different things, and it really helped, so that was great. All right, this is the stretcher, also known as a bed, a gurney, um we yeah, we use these uh, this looks like the new one the electronic one um it's definitely a pleasure uh when you have it uh we never go up and down stairs with it the stretcher itself weighs um a huge amount of pounds I, I don't know but very very heavy so these are the features that it has wheels and it has a mattress. Um, yeah. All right, backboard. So let's just get something clear. It's not a head and neck lecture tonight, but backboards are not used to transport patients anymore. Okay. So if when you took your original course, which would have been prior to 2015, we use them every day. We use them on every patient who hurt themselves. Uh, today, they can be used if you need to get somebody up off the floor, onto your stretcher. I don't even use it for that. I would prefer to use, um, if, if they have a picture of it, the scoop stretcher, but um, that's what we used to do. We do not use them anymore. Um, don't injure a patient while you're moving them. Uh, so knowing how to do it is very important. I'll just say that the number one reason that EMS personnel uh, get injured on the job is their back because they don't lift properly. All right, so this is really important. Uh, this is a good way to lift, knees are bent, Shoulder is over whatever it is he's got to lift, um, and hands are close to his legs. Good technique. This is bad. This is bad between the two of them. Okay. Um, they're going to get back injuries, maybe not from this patient, but if they do this 10 times, uh, they will be they will not be working for too much longer. So place your feet where you balance your standard of gravity, which means spread apart a little bit. Keep your back uh, upright and use your knees and legs. Um, upper body straight, weight close to the body. Okay, um, the power grip um is the way to to get the uh the um patient close so that you know you don't get any injuries while you are lifting um fingers at the same angle and curved palm so then there's times when you got to move the patient other ways so here they're showing what's called the body drag, okay? Again, uh, try to keep your back straight, kneel if you need to, and extend your arms and um, reposition yourself after you move the patient a little. Uh, to drag patient across a bed, um, you wanna kneel on the bed, and complete the drag while standing on the side of the bed. Often I will use the blanket or the sheet rather than the clothing. To get the 
patient from the bed to the hospital stretcher, um, you will you will need to um, sorry you will need to um, use the sheet that is under them and pull or drag them across. This is called the log roll. Again, it's only used to get them onto the backboard and it's only used to get them onto the stretcher. You can log roll them on and off of the backboard. So same sort of thing. Uh, estimated patient's weight before lifting, right? Patient more than uh, 250 should get four providers unless they're all very strong. Okay, he got four providers, one at each end and one at each side. All right, stair chair. So stair chairs come in many shapes and sizes. Um, this one is quite popular today. Um, the problem has pros and cons. Um, it is very heavy. It's a very heavy piece of equipment. So it is horrible if you got to bring a patient up steps on it. Okay. It's made to go down. But if you're carrying a patient up, then you've got the weight of the chair plus the weight of the patient. Um, stairs, maybe you should use a backboard. This is very dependent on the situation. Loading into the ambulance. Okay. Yeah, the self-loading, usually you just got to put the wheels in the tracks and in they go. Team leader, whatever, only one person has the controls anyway. So uh, potential for danger, fires, explosions, etc. So different techniques um, to concern ourselves or not to aggravate a spinal injury, clothing, blanket, arm, or arm-to-arm -arm drag. Um, maybe this here, or here's some pictures. So these are some ways you can move a patient in an emergency situation. Uh, unconscious patient from a vehicle, if you're alone, right, you can't do the, uh, you can't, you can't use a backboard if you're alone. Um, so you can do this, um, but uh, always, if you, you know, if you're with somebody else, it's going to be easier uh, to do the rapid extrication. Rapid extrication should be used if urgency exists. Okay, that's without the without a backboard. Best way to do it is with a backboard, and then get the patient off of the backboard. Non-urgent moves, direct ground lift, different. Let's see, they don't they don't have um, pictures. Extremity lift, um, no suspected, obviously no suspected spinal injury. Um, maybe they're in a small space and you can't get in there with any, you know, with any sort of uh, board or anything. Transferring, obviously it's always easier to transfer um, from the, the, the um, bed, the, well, the hour stretcher to the Hospital bed, use the sheet as as I told you. All 
All right, geriatric patients. I remember that they have brittle bones, the rigid spinal problems. So, and they're very, very scared of what we're going to do. Um, so, yeah, um, be careful. Um, you have these sort of spinal issues that you can have with geriatrics. Bariatrics, that means very heavy. Uh, obese patients, um, very difficult to deal with. You need extra personnel, and you sometimes need a specialized stretcher. So this would be a bariatric stretcher that can carry uh, increased weight load. This is the electronic, all right, or pneumatic um, stretchers. We have some of these makes life easier. Okay, so portable or folding stretchers, things like this. Um, hey, you don't see these so often, but um, we do have the Reeves stretcher, which maybe they have a picture of it. I don't know. This is the KD. We don't use it anymore. All right, we used to use it for Seated patients that were 100% stable, we don't use it anymore. A vacuum mattress, hardly see those in New York. Uh, basket stretches, things like this. These are common. Um, so if you're on strain called Stokes stretches, if you're on rugged terrain, and you got to carry somebody, this would be the way to go, this type of thing. Um, all right, here are the scoop stretches. This is a metal one. They make them today. They're in plastic. They're light. They're easy to use. Uh, you can put half under the patient, then roll the patient, put the other half. So that's really, that's the advantage. I know in the old days, we didn't use it because, oh, what about the spine? But today, we're not as concerned about that we're going to cause damage to the, uh, to the spine. Um, so if you've got to move neonates and isolates, um, you can secure the whole thing to the stretcher. Uh, usually this would be transport, hospital transports that are doing that. Decontamination uh, for your safety, the crew, the patient, and to prevent disease. All right, positioning the patient. So if they have chest pain, respiratory distress, we want to put them in POC, right? Position of comfort. Uh, if they're sh in shock, should be supine, and pregnancy should be on the left side. So this is very, very good piece of information that everyone should remember. Late stage pregnancy should never be placed supine. They should be on their left side. Um, Unresponsive patients should be in the recovery position, again, because they may vomit at any time, and we don't want you know, them to aspirate. Uh, evaluate for, all right, so we may need to do restraints, um, head injury, hypoxia, hypoglycemia. Um, in New York City, you can use soft restraints, you can call PD for, um, uh, what's it called, um, handcuffs. We are not allowed to use or carry. And you can call ALS to do chemical restraint. Okay, always check the ABCs, document what you're doing. All right. 
injured EMTs cannot help anybody, so be careful. And if you're moving somebody, make sure you can do it. All right, 10 questions. Are we ready? What is the first rule of lifting? And it is keep your back in a straight position. Very good. Two, when lifting a stretch using the power lift, what should you do? You should place your hands, palms up on the little handle. Okay, so that's where your hands should be. Three, is it impractical to apply this type of extrication of as a critically injured patient removed from his direct vehicle because it, it takes too long? So it's not about the CAD device. Uh, we never use it on an unstable patient or an unstable vehicle. Uh, now we don't use it for anybody, but that was the reason. Four, proper guidelines for correct reaching include except. All right, so remember we're doing an except. You're looking for three right answers and one wrong answer. So avoid twisting your back is true. Avoid hyperextension your back is true. Keeping your back in a locked position is true. So except we're going to go with reaching no more than 30 inches in front of your body. That's going to be what we want. Five, injured hang glider is trapped at the top of a large mountain. It must be evacuated to the ground. Terrain is very rough and uneven, which you'll find devices will be the safest and most appropriate to use. So I already said that we use a Stokes basket if we are going over rough terrain. Two EMTs are lifting a patient on a long backboard. What should they do? Uh, they should put the strongest EMT at the head of the board. More than half the weight, right, of a patient is going to be at that end. So that's going to be that. Seven, which of fine techniques is considered to be an emergency move? Which of these? Well, it's the firefighter's drag. Uh, it's a one-person technique for moving somebody. A, to extract a patient in the basement of a building, you must transfer the patient up a flight of stairs. So you must ensure that what? So the head should go first. That's basically what we're looking for. And the answer will be A, the elevated head of the backboard goes first. So that's how you go up a flight of stairs. An injured patient needs to be moved, but it's not immediate danger from fire or building collapse. What should you do? You should do the ABCs, right? Always do the ABCs first if the building and the patient is stable. Rapid extrication technique is a what? It is a technique to quickly remove a patient from a vehicle onto a backboard, and that is what we should be using. Um, rapid extrication for all for all of our patients. 